Hey ninjas, spies, and super guys! This is Paul Acevedo of Windows Central here with a video review of the chat pad for Xbox One. It comes in this green box here. It comes with not only the chat pad itself, but also an Xbox One headset and a micro USB cable. The reason that micro USB cable is important is because your Xbox One controller will require an update in order to use the chat pad. So you'll have to plug your controller with the chat pad attached into your Xbox One system using this micro USB cable or any other and download the update to the controller in order to use the chat pad. Here's the little standard headset it comes with. Unlike the one that the launch console came with, it is just a 3.5 millimeter headset that you could use with other devices. And the headset plugs in right here at the bottom of the chat pad. There you go. Here's an up close look at the chat pad before we plug it into a controller. There's the connector. And let's do a quick comparison with the Nyko Type Pad, which is a third party keyboard available for Xbox One controllers. You can see the Nyko Type Pad has an actual headset prong that is required to use certain headsets, not required with the Microsoft Chat Pad. Also, the Nyko Type Pad is a little bit physically larger, it wraps around more of the controller. So this is technically more efficient and is going to add a little bit less weight to the controller. Now, let's plug it in. I've got an Xbox One Elite controller here. The Elite controller has the same basic shape as a regular Xbox One controller, so it fits in the controller the same way. To plug it in, you will have to line this up. For some people, the process of inserting the chat pad into the controller for the first time has been difficult. It tends to stick a little bit. It requires kind of a push. It can be hard to get it lined up just right that first time. So it seems like there's some kind of minor design flaw associated with the data port and the way that things plug into it. But still, eventually I got it in, took probably a couple of minutes the first time, but now it just slides on and off very easily after that. So I guess it's just a matter of loosening it up. There we go. And it really doesn't add too much weight. It's still quite comfortable to hold. There aren't a lot of Xbox One games that call for the use of a keyboard, but one good example is Onigiri, the free-to-play MMORPG. With Onigiri, you press Enter, and then you can type things. Right like that, and it appears in-game. Make sure everybody knows which website they should be going to for Windows and Xbox One news. Other good examples of games that call for keyboard use would be the Forza series. You can use a keyboard to input the name of your custom car designs and descriptions for those. And there's actually a decent number of games in which you would name your character or user created content. And most of the time those do support a keyboard. Before we talk more about text entry, let's look at the X1 and X2 buttons on the chat pad. These are unique buttons that you'll only find on this accessory, and they do special things on Xbox One. When I push X1, it takes a screenshot. And when I push X2, it records a gameplay clip. This lets you perform these functions without having to resort to menus or connect commands. It's really convenient to be able to take screenshots right away. Microsoft also promises that we'll be able to customize the functions of the X1 and X2 buttons in the near future. That functionality will come through a system update and then you'll use your system settings menu to actually set up these functions. Another great thing about the chat pad is that it actually functions as a stereo headset adapter. So it performs all the exact same functions as that separate accessory would right here with a built-in keyboard. So when you have a headset plugged into the chat pad, you can use these two buttons on the left to adjust the balance between game sound and chat. Then you can use these two buttons on the right to adjust the volume up and down. Really cool to have all those functions built right into the chat pad so you don't have to plug any extra junk into it besides your headset. Of course, the main reason many people will buy the chat pad is likely to make sending messages to their friends more convenient. Here we are, I can just type little phrases, simple enough. Backspace key down here. 
when I want to capitalize a letter, I just have to hit shift once and then hit the key. Now the next thing will not be capitalized. That's a big improvement over Nyko's type pad, which basically has caps lock and nothing else. This does have the caps lock function though. To use it, you hit the orange button and then hit caps and then everything should come out capitalized. Now looking at the keys here, you have a full row of numbers up at the top. Interestingly, none of the alternate functions for the keys are mapped to the top row of numbers. On a real PC keyboard, you would have things like exclamation mark mapped to the top row. Instead, they are mapped one row down here. Not exactly sure why Microsoft chose to do it that way. But on the plus side, the things that would be mapped to one, two, three, four, five are still mapped directly below them. So it's not like a big learning process to figure out where the parentheses would be, for instance. The chat pad has two alternate sets of characters you can access. You have the green set, such as the exclamation marks, punctuation marks. Then you have the orange set, which consists of a few symbols and mostly different letters used in other countries besides the United States. So if I wanted to type something in Spanish, for instance, hola, then I can do upside down exclamation mark, shift, and go to green exclamation mark right there, hola. Pretty cool to be able to type things in Spanish or other languages if you like. The way the green and orange buttons work is really nice. You can just hit them once and that'll perform the function once. Then the next time you hit that key, it comes out as the regular letter that it's supposed to be. But if you wanted to say type a bunch of the same special character, you just hold orange and then hit the character and it'll come out the right way, just as you would intend. I have discovered one bug with the chat pad at launch that is the tilde symbol on the A button. When I hit green and tilde, it actually just performed the orange function of the letter after I hit it twice. But if I hold green, I can still get the tilde to come out. It just doesn't come out the first time like it's supposed to. I've tested every other key. The only key that has this problem is the tilde on the A button. But how often do you even hit that button, am I right? Looking at the chat pad up close, you can see that every key sticks out a little bit so you can feel them just by touch. Then F and J have little bumps on them just like they would on a standard PC keyboard. So you can find your position sometimes without having to look down at the chat pad itself. The chat pad keys are relatively small, but they have a nice click to them. And they also have a great repeat rate. You're not gonna accidentally hit one key more than once unless you really hold it down for a while. That's another significant improvement over the Nyko type pad. By the way, the chat pad is PC compatible, but only with Windows 10. I've tested it with Windows 8.1 and unfortunately it has no driver right now. It's possible users will create their own keyboard driver for Windows 8 and below. But for now, if you plan to use it with a computer, you'll have to install Windows 10 on your computer. Bit of a drag, but Microsoft really wants us all using Windows 10 and that's just how it's gonna be from now on. So the chat pad is a really useful accessory. It's a lot more convenient to type with a physical keyboard that's right there on your controller than having to use Smart Class on your phone. You don't have to reach away from the controller and you don't have to worry about running your phone's battery down or the slowness of starting up Smart Class. You've just always got access to that keyboard right there. The chat pad is extremely well designed. It's got all the characters you could ask for. It's really easy to type with. And it's super cool that it doubles as a stereo headset adapter and even comes with a headset. For $34.99, I consider it a great value. And there is no contest between the official chat pad and the Nyko type pad. The chat pad is much nicer, way easier to type with, doesn't have a key repeating issues like this one does, and it doesn't require a USB dongle. It just plugs into any standard Xbox One controller and it's going to work just fine. The chat pad can improve your experience when playing games like Onigiri that have a lot of text entry. It makes searching for videos on YouTube or Netflix and other video apps a lot easier, browsing the web, messaging your friends. It's a really handy accessory and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. Read my full review of the chat pad on windowscentral.com. You'll also find my review of the Nyko type pad there, as well as the video review here on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch, and remember, don't hate, appreciate.